there. Today we are going to be making a cover for our smart meter. Uh, there's a lot of concerns, health concerns, about the power levels and the high frequencies emitted from these smart meters that are placed on homes. Oftentimes they are placed on houses where they're pointed directly into someone else's house and there's quite a large signal that comes off the back of the meter into the house. So if you have any concerns about your smart meter, here's a do-it-yourself at home project that you can do to mitigate some of that signal. Here's the stuff you're going to need. This is a aluminum screening and it's for a screen door screen. It's quite soft, like a fabric. Uh, stick with the metal color, don't go with the black. And you'll need some good duct tape, cheap duct tape rips, a pair of scissors, a Sharpie pen, a ruler, and then just a little bit of copper wire with a cutter. And I always wear gloves when I work with the aluminum screen as it's quite sharp. Okay, so we're just doing the measurements for the long strip that's going to be the side. And it's 19 and 3 quarters inches, so, and you're going to want overlap for taping it. So I made this one 22 inches long. And as you can see, I just used the Sharpie to put marks on the screen. It's 3 inches wide. So I'm just going to draw the line along here. Oops. distance and it just leaves kind of a shadowy effect on there but it's good enough because it's a grid screen and you don't want to use a solid piece of conductive foil for instance because you don't want to block the signal 100% the utility company still has to take their reading and so you want to make sure that the finer the grid, the more it'll block it. So when you purchase your screen, you don't want it to be you want it to be screen. You don't want a solid foil. That'll block too much of the signal. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut that out. And as you can see, it cuts very easily like a like a fabric. So I'm going to cut this whole thing out. So now we've got our thin strip. And you take the duct tape and take a piece that's the length of the, of the strip. And I'm just lying it face up so that we can see the edge going on it. Oops, sticky. Okay. So, what you do is, is you take your edge and place it on top the tape and go about halfway up because you're going to be folding over this one edge anyway. Put it on there. And then I usually wear gloves for this part because the, the aluminum has a way of coming through the tape. So this is going to create the edge that goes closest to the meter. This is going to be the inside edge. And the top edge is going to be left clear so that it can make a good conductive surface with the little cap. So we're only going to tape one of these edges and we're going to leave this one blank. So we've got that one edge taped. Now we're going to take the tape measure and we're going to make the mark at the 19 and 3 quarters mark. We're going to make our mark here. And that's just a little marker to show you how much is going to overlap. And you can leave less overlap. I've left quite a bit there. So I'm going to trim some of that off. So now you bring your ring around and match it up to your to the mark that you've just made and that means this inside ring is now 19 and 3 quarters inches 
So, I'm just going to take a little skinnier piece of tape and tape along that inside edge. And this is just a little piece of duct tape cut in half. And this Make sure to tape it down very, very well on both sides because you want to make sure that there is no leakage. So now we've got this ring and we're going to get the top ready. So then make your ring going to the 19 and 3 quarters. And of course you can take your own tape measure and make sure that, that your meter is the same, that they're standard. So now we're going to measure across the top, and it's got a 6 inch um, diameter. So we are going to go ahead and make a 6 inch circle. So what you do, there's different ways to do this. If you've got a compass, if you've got a string that you can tie to this at 3 inches in the middle, you can do that. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make tabs on this, so I'm going to go, three inches would be our center normally, but I'm going to go with four inches because I want to leave some on the edge for, uh, to create the tabs. So go four inches in, let's put something under here, it doesn't need a mark. So I'm going four inches in from here and four inches in from here and creating a center spot. So that's going to be the center of our ring right there. And then from that center, go out three inches. Like you can actually put this at three inches right in the middle. Make a mark at six and make a mark here. And then just spin it around with three inches in the middle. Six, zero, six, zero, because this is going to be taped down to the top of the ring, and too small wouldn't be good, but a little too big is not too bad either. It doesn't have to be an exact circle, but it will be close. So after you've got those marks on there, then just freehand, you know, draw your circle. And if you've got a plate or a plant pot or something that's six inches around, you can just lay it right on the screen and do a template like that. My pen is running out a little. Okay. So when you have your circle drawn, now you draw the tabs on. And they can just be randomly spaced because what these are going to do is they're going to make contact with the ring that we've just made, leaving the untaped part at the top so that when you plug it in, the whole ring will be conductive. And these don't have to be exactly measured either. You're just going to be cutting them out. But put lots of them on because you also want to have a good surface to tape, to tape onto. So as you can see, what I'm doing is just cutting out the, the spaces between the tabs and again, they don't have to be perfectly sized. It's good to have a, you know, a good close proximity. But as long as your initial ring is the right size, this cap, the edges are going to be covered with tape, as you can see. So now I've got my top piece, and we're just going to fold these down at a 90 degree angle. And they're going to make good conductive contact with the edge of the ring. And then you just lay it on like that. 
And now what we're going to do is, is you've got to use shorter pieces of tape for this part because you're going in a circle. So it's easier when you do this to again overlap it so there's no leakage. Do your side first, stick that on like that, and then make a little cut in the middle so that it lays down flat on the top. And then turn it upside down and press it. So now the top is on all the way around and you just want to take a few minutes to really make sure that the tape is secure all the way around and that it's uh, that there's no bulges or places for it to escape. So give it a good press. Okay, and the last part is to take a piece of copper wire it doesn't have to be that long and then what you do, so it's about six inches is take your copper wire, now there's different ways to attach this, you can use your imagination but what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave this little piece of copper in and out of the screen to make a good connection. So just weave it in and out a couple of times like that. So again you've got a good contact and it's a good thing to use a little bit of tape to tape it down because you don't want that escaping. And then you're ready to attach it to your smart meter. Okay, so here we are, and uh, this is a step down iTron meter, and it's a one way radio receiver, basically uh, same as a smart meter. And we're going to look at the readings. Now I'm a little close to the meter here because I'm on a porch, but as you can see, the signal is approximately once per second and the measurements go anywhere from about 250 right up to 5 600 microwatts per meter squared and so put your wire at the bottom and put it over and then you see there's a locking mechanism on the ring of this smart meter so i'm going to put Actually, we'll go on this side, and we're just going to wrap the copper. Now, if there's no locking mechanism like this, you can still use any spot you can see to firmly attach the copper to this, to the ring, because this ring that's on the meter is a grounded electrical source. So this is what is turning this smart meter cap into a Faraday cage. Now you could also tape it on. You know, if you can't find a little ring like this, then you can just tape it on. So you want to make sure you've got a snug fit. And you could, if you wanted to, tape this edge as well. So as you can see, it is still emitting once per second but we've gone from 250 or 500 microwatts per meter squared down to 10 to 15, 20. And with the Faraday cage, what also happens is this also blocks and helps mitigate the signal inside of the house. So it's best not to use a solid cover like a foil because that'll block too much of the signal. You've got to use a larger mesh uh, to allow enough of the signal to come out. And I think I will just tape that on there to be more secure, especially if you're not under a covered porch and uh, the wind is going to affect it. So thank you very much and good luck with your smart meter covers.